Dion. Eduarda Mora. The nickname is Rhonda. She's on a speed run to the top. She's nearly two years into her pro career. She's already 9 0. But unlike your weird coworker, Paul, who can just snap of a finger and beat Minesweeper, this speed run is now going to run through Mexico. And Mora is going to be taking on Montserrat Canejo Ruiz. And for Eduardo Mora, I found it really interesting. You go back and you look at some of the tape. You tell me where to find it. I'll be completely honest with you. I get mad when people say like that. Daily motion. And I've said that multiple, multiple times. But for Eduardo Mora, I tried Facebook, I tried Twitter, I tried Daily Motion, I tried Brazilian websites, AG, Combate, Global. I tried everywhere. It's really hard to find Eduardo Mora tape. And what I can say about her is she's a little bit like a fighter who made her debut a few weeks ago against Tainara Lisboa. It's Javina Oliveira. You've got such a little sample size of having eight fights outside of the UFC the one fight on Dana White's contender series so I'll call that nine fights total there was seven different organizations so all over the place on the Brazilian regional scene she represents Gal Pau de Luta which is of course the gym that's represented by one half of your main event in Jalton Almeida I don't know if Mora wins if she's gonna say hey get my guy Carlos Felipe back in the UFC like Jalton Almeida does but for Eduardo Mora, what do we know? Well, she's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu purple belt. You can see that out on her Instagram. You can see her doing a lot of striking with the gloves on in the gym. But then I watch Eduardo Mora fight. And again, a very, very limited sample size. But my goodness, when she gets happy on the feet, she gets not just happy feet like the movie, but she kind of like stands there, plants, and then just kind of throws like she's Chaos Williams. But there's usually not much there. She will go for a high amplitude of takedowns very, very early on, like her teammate Jalton Almeida, and her bread really does get buttered once it gets down to the mat. Pretty good ground and pound, really good top pressure, and a good submission game to go with it for Eduardo Mora. But in this one, it gets interesting because for Montserrat Canejo, a multiple-time Mexican wrestling champ. And you know her as the Scarfold Queen. She's oh, yes. able to do it against Cheyenne Vlizmus. She was able to do it down on the regional scene as well against Janesha Moranj and over with Invicta. Ruiz, one of those fighters that loves to go for the upper body throws, get her opponents into bad positions. Now, you heard the drop at the start of the video, the double Dion. What's that about? Well, the 2005... World Junior Championship. Sidney Crosby, was he on the team? Sure he was. But it was Dion Phaneuf landing a double hit against uh, two folks in an actual hockey game. Well, Montserrat Canejo Ruiz was a recipient of a double Dion courtesy of Amanda Lemos in a knockout loss not that soon after she had beaten Cheyenne Vlismas to get UFC win number one. Ruiz took about two years off. She fought just a couple of months ago against Jacqueline Amorim. And Matt, I'll throw the scorecards up there. Two judges in that one, Camillo and Ron McCarthy, scored that 20-16 to 16 going into the third round. That means two judges had it 10-8s, round one, round two. I also had it 10-8, round one, round two. Conejo got completely outclassed when it got down to the mat. And the big question marks with Amarim were, A, gas tank, because it had faltered exactly. her against Sam Hughes. And we know Amarim as being a big-time first-round finisher. But C, I mean, Canejo, you would thought with the lineage that she has, the grapplers that she trains with out of 10th Planet in San Diego, King's MMA and Enthron Gym, that she's have, she would have some solution. But she just kind of faltered and wilted in that one. And that's always disappointing to see, right? Because you know how good of a grappler she can be when she gets the fight in, into positions where she is in that top spot where she can be the more dominant fighter. But I thought she was going to have more answers off her back in terms of either scrambling or even on the feet, to be honest. Like, Kanejo has one of those styles to where, okay, if you're a long-rangey striker who can really make her pay, you're going to have a field day. You're going to be able to hit her before she can clinch with you. And she doesn't have a lot of answers from that back position. But... She is a little bit like Clint Capella, right? Like, you can upgrade if you can get Rudy Gobert. Chet Holmgren looks pretty good in that spot. Like, if you put that person in a position where they can be really effective, if you squint, they might even look like a Hall of Famer. And for Kanyeho Ruiz, that's what she is able to do with that clinch game and with her top takedowns. And that's why I have such a hard time with this uh, fight. Because if Mora is happy to just plant her feet and stand in that position, then those clinches are going to be coming more often as the fight rolls on. And if that is the case, not like Ruiz is a 10 out of 10 grappler, right? I don't think she's going to get the takedown every time she gets that head and arm choke position. But... 
the more chances you give somebody, you're just tempting fate, right? And for Kanejo, what I worry about is at 30 years old, does she still have the time to make those improvements in at least her striking game? Because so, I feel like if she did have at least more of a threat in that one spot, you could see the rest of her game continue to improve because she'd have at least more threats. Mora just fought on Contender Series. She got a win against a much, much smaller opponent, similar in size. And she's going to be bigger in this fight. Ruiz in Janina Silva. And so in the opening seconds of that fight, Silva Meyer marches forward more drops down gets a takedown spends the entirety of that round or whatever's left in the round on top she ends up getting the finish and it was like a no hook rear naked choke that was opened up by her ground and pound and she even got into a nice man and cruise fix in that spot it was really well done again another mora fight that you can go back and see her fight against eduarda santana who was also billed as duda like remember duda santana she was going to be the next biggest thing but mora goes out there she looks completely yoked she gets the win in that one fairly easily but i'll throw the picture up there that was the oldest look a 19 year old that she had fought so again mora's two years into her pro career almost two years into her pro career she's nine and oh and craig allen and trust me i know i'm trying like it sounds like i'm pumping my tires i could find two of her fights and one of them was on contender series so that that should go enough to tell you that i'm looking at uh topology right now and they say minus 450 mora I don't fucking know. Why the fuck would you put any money on that? That's stupid. Try and find the fight date, but it's not out there. So just, it, regardless of who we make a pick on, just consider this one a wash. Call it pop and popcorn and move on to see another day. For Montserrat Canejo Ruiz, why is this fight really important? It's because almost exactly, it's because almost exactly a month out from her loss to Jacqueline Amarim, where two judges had her losing 10-8 in the first two rounds, and she got finished in the third round. She accepted this fight. It was originally supposed to be one championship from one fight night. The old striker, So Yul Kim. Kim is out. Ruiz takes this fight. So a month from losing, accepts the fight, and then gets a month to come into this one. So I wouldn't anticipate that the striking skills are going to be all that much improved. You got a little bit of a southpaw versus orthodox thing going on here. We'll see if Ruiz can have some of the takedown defense that we knew her for uh, Aya outside of the UFC. We'll see how this one plays out. Moore is a really big favorite. And listen, topology, again, it's going to be a wash. I'm going to say over under just because of where the odds are. 85% Mora. Ah, uh, they're probably over. Yeah, okay. Uh, 1,214 total votes, 92% Mora, 57% by submission, 8% by Kanye uh, Ruiz, 76% by decision. If I can find two fights... I just stay away from it. Matt, who's your pick here? I've got Moira. But Moira? everything you bring up is reasonable. I just want to know where the nickname Rhonda comes from. Like, that's all I've been thinking about. It goes for a lot of takedowns. I guess. It's just like, who's like, hey, you're Rhonda now. Just always been a Teresa weird Teresa Blade does, Rhonda. I know. It's like a much more common nickname than you would ever think. That's why I'm asking. Alexeva? Like, there's been multiple Rondas. Uh, I, I <clears throat> excuse me. I do have her in the matchup. Even though her tape was very difficult to find, like you bring up, it's not like the tape on Kenya Hold on. Ruiz is beautiful. Hard to find. It doesn't fucking exist. Okay, you said hard to find. Jim... I'm just saying the words you said. Calm down. Uh, later on in Let's this get video. Mad about nothing, Hold on. Why don't we? Later on in this video, I'm going to tell you about Victor Hugo. His tape was really easy to find. He fights in a mall. Before he fought on Contender Series. You can find it easily. Cowway Fernandez, very easy to find. Eduardo Mora, it doesn't exist. It's like a uh, it's like a magic trick. So, Matt, I will go with Mora. But if the wheels fall off, I can see her easily losing this fight. So, Matt, this is going to be an interesting one. Let us know in the comments section who you have. And if you can find any extra fight tape on Mora, apart from the fight against Santana and the fight that was on Contender Series, we have some big-time bangers on this card. Almeida's taking on Lewis in the main event. You're not going to want to miss it. Keep it locked in with Fight Name Picks. We always say, let's get into 